Good morning, fellas. It's going to be another great day in Dothan, Alabama. We're back at the shop of Barry Wardlaw from Acura Engineering, one of the top V-twin engine builders the world has ever seen. And this shop is absolutely off the hook. He's got a couple of inc incredible bikes that he's building to set uh, land world speed records in drag racing. We'll go take a look at those. He's going to show, show us what he's got in the works. If this looks familiar, this is a 34 Harley Davidson VL powered midget that was uh, designed from a popular mechanics uh, article back in the, in, in the 70s. And uh, this was formerly at the Wheels Through Time Museum. Stay tuned because tomorrow we're going to the Wheels Through Time Museum. They're going to roll out the red carpet. We're going to get a private tour. They're closed until April 1st for the winter. But we're going to get a private tour there of their shop and the projects they're working on with, with Matt. This is Gypsy's bike. Uh, in the last video, you might remember she's a real deal. She's the only woman whose motorcycle made it to the cover of the Easy Riders magazine. And she actually won the biker's build-off on Discovery Channel uh, some time ago. So you Google that, you'll see there's a big video on that online. So the shop is full of memorabilia, choppers, old pan heads, shovel heads. This XR1000 is absolutely stunning. And the, the wall, it's, it's in a museum in its own right. There's a, a, a lifetime of memorabilia, magazines, bicycles, all, time, all kinds of really cool stuff. Uh, riding gear, uh, sets of colors, um, retired sets of colors from one percenters. Um, just some incredible uh, memorabilia in here. But today's, today's video is going to be about this bike right here. We'll have Barry give you a rundown of what exactly he's doing with this and the type of motor that he's putting in it. And of course, the shop mascot was here to greet us this morning. Hi, Molly. How are you? She's a watchdog. She's keeping an eye on things. Huh? Yes, you. Hello, yes, you. Molly. How are you? Good morning, Vivian. Good morning. How are How you? Are you? Thanks yeah. for. Uh, this is our old girl now. She has ridden more miles backing up than most guys have ridden going forward. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. She rides with you? Yeah, she jumps up on the gas tank. Um, on your Dyna? Uh, we have a piece of sheepskin that we put uh -huh. up on the gas tank, and she just she jumps up there and just rides. She rolls over, sleeps, sits up, stretches. I was, but, uh, I was showing the guys your Dyna. What year is that? 2012. That thing's beautiful. Is that is that a new, new bike to you? You just got it recently. Yeah, that's a new bike to me. Um, let me see. I think it, I think it has like 5,200 miles or something on it for a 2012. It's like psh, never dropped, never been in the rain. I mean, it's awesome. I, I, almost, I ride a Dyna also. I'm a big time FXR and Dyna guy. Since yeah, I left yeah. you guys last uh, last couple a couple weeks ago, I went up to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and bought three beautiful FXRs from my friends George Audi. Yeah, uh, he um he had a 2000 FXR4 the last year of, of the FXR, and two 90s, a couple hot rods with mountain motors in them. So I'm looking forward to getting oh, those yeah. on the open road yeah, for yeah, Bike yeah. Week, you know. Well, so so tell you... tell me tell me about your latest projects. I know you have a couple of really cool machines that are in the works. You and Barry are yeah. Barry's putting together. Um. Well, Barry is uh, doing a dual uh, dual carb knucklehead. Got to replace this. I think it's an ultimate engine, if I'm not mistaken. Did, the, did this bike here set a record also at some point with this frame? In, in, in morning, Barry. Uh, this, good morning. Thank you for opening up here on a Monday morning for us, sure. bright and early. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Uh, the, a, a fellow contracted this frame from Bonnie Truett to have it built in 1986, and he never finished the project. Yep. And uh, he went to Bonneville when we went out to Bonneville and ran our pan head and uh, just became addicted to it. So he built this bike to challenge us a couple years later at Bonneville and uh, and beat our record by seven miles an hour. Son of a gun. <laughs> yeah. But the, it's never been down a drag strip. It, it's just set up. I put this wheel on here. So, uh, so this frame that was built for the Bonneville Soft Flash. No, was, this was built for drag. Oh, so so can you, can you, uh, apparently you can run a, a drag frame. Is it a similar oh, style frame? Do. Yeah, because they're going really Yeah, bad. dual purpose stuff, you know, affordability and whatnot. It's not optimum, but, it's, you know, it's what you have. It, to me, it looks like it was really well done. It looks like, a, uh, you know, you got the upside down forks, the, the Buell front well, end. I did that. That came off of a Buell. He had uh, a, a pair of red wings on it at, at the time. And we did this uh, simply because we were going to Bonneville, back to Bonneville. 
But now uh, we're putting in a dual carb knucklehead. I've got the heads right over here. It was the very first set of dual carb uh, knucklehead that Flathead Power brought to the United States. And uh, shout out to Anders and uh, and uh, well wishes to him. He's been through some very challenging times lately. Uh, so, uh, uh, and we're going to run it very naked. We're going to run the motor like they would have done, except for the dual carb. It's a different style setup. Uh, but we're going to run it really open and naked, open rocker arms, open push rods, all of that. We're going to do it in a, in a traditional sense. We're going to keep the four speed in it, and we're going to be using this in the uh, uh, in the vintage races, mainly with uh, Jay Rogers up in Humboldt, Iowa, and he does that on a July, right around July the fourth. Uh, so uh, it's a two-day event. Super neat stuff. Super neat stuff. But uh, a lot of drag. Through. So we're, we're going to take the knucklehead up there. We won't be fast. We'll be cool. So Barry, in my opinion, anybody can buy a brand new motor like this from S and S or a catalog or whatever. Yeah, this is an it, Ultima. It, yeah. it, it, an Ultima. And that it, guy did it, yeah. And it's supposed to go fast right out of the box, you know. But very few people on the planet can do what you and Gypsy do here, and and that is taking a 1938 Crocker, which you can't even get parts for. Obviously, you got to be a machi machinist and a mechanic and a, and pretty much an engineer to do what you're doing. You're going to take a 38 Crocker from a basket and make it something capable of setting the wor land world speed record. Well, I'll explain that. We were uh, contracted at one time to reproduce the Crocker engine from supplied castings. Wow. And uh, it goes back 12 or 14 years ago, 16 years ago. And we did that project and we finished it. But as with many uh, relationships, it didn't work out so damn well. So, uh, were they building, we were, left, we were left with an engine, yeah. This, were they going to reinvent the Crocker? They were going to reproduce it? Like someone was going to actually do that? that and and you were the guy who was going to build correct. the motor? There's been, that I know of, like four people around the world that have, have tried this and, and some, and I know some names of people that are still capable of doing that. But, uh, because the, 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 the Crocker, it, it, it's just, you, you can't afford those things anymore. It's only for the wealthy as far as collecting. It's a six-figure bike, so right? So what we did is we reproduced it from those castings and uh, and since it's uh, not an original, I'm carving it up, and I'm going to go to Bonneville and try to set a record with it. Won't be it won't be a the land speed record, but I'm on uh, <laughs> the, the fastest, fastest thirty. Heck yeah! That. So uh, uh, that's yeah, not is, and, is that one going in this frame, or is that going in a different frame? That's going uh, no, we're building a frame for it. You're this, building a this frame. This is another dual carb knucklehead here. This is a thirty-four VL. Uh, frame. That's a 34. Uh, yep, and we're using these Chiriani forks. Wow, but those are awesome. we're not going to Bonneville. NOS, baby, look at those. Yeah, wow. and since we're not going to Bonneville, I believe I'm going to put Chiriani forks back on this. Okay. Because of the, the cool factor. To, yeah. To go along with the knucklehead motor, sure. the 86 frame, and just, just look. Just. So the knucklehead frame is going to look like this one? The, that's the knucklehead frame. Oh, uh, this is oh, the this is the one you're putting the the knucklehead. knucklehead. The dual carb knucklehead. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's going that's in this one. Dual carb knucklehead. Well, which one? Are, which one's the Crocker going in? We're building that frame. Oh, you're building it. So what are you doing with this one? We're, we're, this is the one we're drag racing with the, with this dual carb knucklehead. Okay, so did, I, I was, I was trying to verify. I was a little confused. Sorry. We have two of them. There's one sitting there in the middle. There are two okay. knuckleheads over there. Wow. So. Uh, it's safe to say you're the only guy around with two dual carb knuckleheads. <laughs> well, we've got more than that, but, but, but this, as you can see, this type of dual carb knucklehead, the carburetors are coming out the left hand side at an angle. What we're going to do is I'm going to take this out and straighten this angle up. But uh, oh, let's go look real quick. I'll show you. These motors are, you'll, you'll be able to see these motors are beautiful. This, I've never really, uh, I've never really shown anybody this before. Uh, so what's the difference between these two motors? Are they very similar in uh, uh no. She's... no, they're uh other than their dual carb knuckleheads? That's correct. Are you building them for different applications? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can see one's got the black jugs obviously and more polished. This is an S and S motor that uh you can you buy them like that. I don't think they offer this anymore with the alternator left hand side. Uh I think you can get the case, I don't think you can get the motor. So it's an we, were NOS, this, NOS we, unit. we were doing this one for a project. But that's that we're not doing anything with it right now. Okay. So this is, and they're in the configure front and rear. You can see the carburetors coming out the left hand side. These were the flathead power heads. Uh, we converted these to roller rockers. We had Baisley do it. And then, oh, I want to share a tip. Let me share a doggone trick with you guys. If I can find the stuff where I put it. 
Uh, I just took these apart yesterday. They're right here. And there's Barry's mind. They'll love oh, oh, they're yeah, gonna love this. Too. Somebody's gonna love this. Oh, but wait, there's more. So much to cover uh, and so little time. <laughs> right you know? Take a view of this. This is a stock style. This is an S and S, but it's a stock style uh, rocker arm cover for a knucklehead. You can see this is the groove, and what that is is it gives it area for the arm here. They do not come with rollers. They come with a uh, just a pad. So what we do is we take this and we take a freeze plug. We notch the freeze plug so it can sit over this area and we set that flat, it'll go flat. So this is nothing but a freeze plug that we welded to it. Now, this was one of the first ones we did. Not so pretty on the welds. Now what we would do is tack it, weld it on the inside and clean it up. But you may, you can still see the freeze plug number. In fact, I'm gonna give it to you. 555-030, 555-030, this is the number. So if you're putting roller rockers on your knuckle head, weld your freeze plug on there and get you some clearance. And use the aftermarket ones. Don't use the original ones. Somebody will scold you for that. So that being said, oh, yeah. oh, this is this style. Now, this is the motor that's going in the VL frame that we just... Okay, discussed. that's the going in the frame, frame on the floor, the 34. Yes. It's a 38-style 38, 38 engine going in a 34-style frame. Well, it's just a, it's just a knucklehead-style engine, yeah. uh, 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 whatever year you want to call it. But it's got the alternator left-hand case. What years was the knuckle made? 3647. Yep. And so... Uh, We'll, we'll go over this one real quick. The EL, the 61 cubic inch, which started in 36, is a three and a half inch stroke. This is a three and a half inch stroke motor. We, uh, uh, there's a cool thing about uh, Sid Smith helping me with these five wheels and whatnot, one of the last five wheels he did. But anyway, uh, that's a three and 13 sixteenths bore, so we're right at 80 cubic inches. Great rod to stroke ratio, 2.1, something like that. And then we did these cylinders, but these are two rear heads. So it's a dual car, but it's two rear heads. And so what we did, and we're still using the factory tins and knucklehead up front. And what we did is we re relocated some areas. We added an extension here. So it's all stock except for it's a rear head. Now, if you'll step right over here, I'll show you how we're dual carbing this one. Um, John Andrews made the cam for this one. Uh, Justin Lineweber's doing the cam for the other, for the Crocker. But uh, these are the exhaust ports. And I'm turning those, those are our, they're gonna be the intake ports. And the carburetors are gonna sit like this, like an wow. XR750. That's gonna look sick. You know, the XR1000 over Love there? Love that. It's set up like that. That's gonna That's be how this will be. And uh, this exhaust pipe will come out here, like an XR750, we call this the XRK. Finished, this goes flat track style, early flat track style, in the VL frame nice. with knockoff wheels and uh, cherry on forks. Very cool. Yeah. So you probably handle like a one. dream too. So this bit. dual carb is drag racing. This dual carb is flat track hot rod style. Dual rear head. And then the Crocker here, uh, this is the Crocker, and you can see it's polished crankcases because these are not original. We got these as, as castings, and you can see the areas where we had to weld and we had to do all kinds of things to make these actually work, and we did. But I want to share this. We welded up all this side, machined it all out, and we're running Timken bearings here. Very nice. So we're running Timken bearings. We're running a late model Harley Davidson Unitized style bearing over here. So our lower, it, it, it's, be it's bulletproof. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's it's, it's really nice. Uh, How many CCs will this motor be, or cubic inches? This one here. It's interesting. Because the shootout, the, 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 the thing of, with Crocker and Harley Davidson was the overhead valve. Overhead valve was first with the Crocker, then came the knucklehead right behind it. I mean, they were neck and neck to the finish line, but the Crocker was faster. Not by a million miles an hour, but just enough to get bragging rights. Nobody cares who got so, second. Uh, what, yeah. do, what do they say? What, sell, what wins on Sunday, sell on Monday, Win right? On Monday, sell on <laughs> Monday, yeah. But then the, uh, but the other stuff is... Uh, uh, so the Crocker was faster so, so out of the box. The, the, the Crocker was faster. The transmission was part of the frame. That's, eh, that's not so smart. But anyway, so.
so what we're doing with this, and it's just for fun, because there's always going to be a guy out there going, yeah, but, I don't, I don't pay attention to yeah, but people. This is a crocker head. Notice the combustion chamber. We've had to weld all this up. Now, it was running one and three quarter, one and three quarter valves. Yeah. That's all coming out. And I'm doing a 1950 on the intake. Wow. Now, we all know that it's airflow. You got to get some air in there. You got to have some fuel. This is the intake port of a crocker. Look at this thing. What in the world is that? This is, remember Dealey Plaza? That's yep. that guy. That's the size of the port. Oh, wow. That is the size of a, of a port of a crocker. Not a lot of airflow, but it was still faster than the knucklehead. So what we've done is at one time we had three dynos and three flow benches here. Sold it all because it, was, it wasn't relative anymore. Wasn't using it. Well, I bought another dyno, and now I'm buying another flow bench. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the crocker head before we change it and test the knucklehead on a, on a real one, on an original one. I have one laying here. Uh, what, would your, what would your estimate be of the horsepower of these three motors uh, in torque? Um, oh, I don't know yet. Oh, I don't just know. A, give because, me a wild, because wild of the, these short strokes. Now, here, here's the deal. Uh, hey, Barry, mm -hmm. I'm willing to bet that, that uh, lunch that you'll come within 10% of what it'll actually be. <laughs> it hasn't happened. I'll bet. Because you have how many motors you paper. built? You built thousands of motors, man. I bet you. I've put pen to paper. It's, it's, it's not going to be crazy. That's a, it's going to be a, fun, though. That's the engineering perfectionist in front of you. He doesn't want to guesstimate. Now, this was the three and a half inch uh, stroke, and, and we we're three at 13 16 bore. Yep. And uh, I don't want to tell it all, but this is three and five eighths stroke. And look at the thickness of that blooming wow. wire. Holy That's cow. That's beefy. But guess what I can do with that hole? Bore it out. <laughs> to what? Uh, Three and five eighths. I'm going to make a square crocker. Ooh. going to be a square motor. It also has a 2.1 to 1 uh, uh, rod to stroke ratio. And they're both right at 80 cubic inches. Nice. And so it's going to be interesting. We've got the, we've got the torque flywheels. We've got the rev flywheels. You know, it's going to be real fun. Here's some of the, uh, uh, you know, we had the roller rockers that I have built for this. Well, I have other sets of knucklehead roller rockers. I've got four or five sets around. Here. So we couldn't leave the crocker without a set of roller rockers. We made these out of tool steel, adjustable on the ball here. And they go in like this. And they all through there. But one of the changes we're going to make on this is since it's not I love saying this because somebody's out there, that's not a real crocker. Yeah, you're right. Since it's not an original crocker, and these heads were cast of aluminum out of cast iron, I'm removing these two fins, and I'm welding all this up. I'm going to replicate that cut in that hole, but I'm going to make it a heck of a lot bigger. We're going to get some airflow, and then I'm going to put a fin back to replicate the look. Those in the know, I mean, those not in the know won't know, and those in the know, they already know. But anyway, so we're going to increase the airflow. We're going to do some combustion chamber work, piston work, bigger intake valve, roller rockers. And the camshaft is being, uh, uh, I designed the cam. Justin Lineweber's making it for me. So, uh, but it'll be fun to have a hot rod knucklehead, a hot rod crocker, uh, and we can just race them against each other and have some fun with it. It's just, it's just for fun. Something that's like, awesome. You know, well, isn't that why we're supposed to be doing this in the first place? Motorcycles right. are supposed that's, to be that fun. Absolutely. I think we, some of absolutely. us may have lost, Lay the lost bed, that train, vision. Get up and go build it. Yep. Lay the bed, train, get up and build it. Keep doing that. And you'll be able to do something like this. That's awesome. You got to hear it. I can hear them talking across the street. When that, thing, when that door is down and I'm standing right there, I can hear them talking across the street. It's the craziest thing. Guys, when you come to Dothan, Alabama, this is this kind of a motorcycle mecca. You've got the one of the oldest Harley Davidson dealers in the country, number 14. You've got Barry here, Accurate Engineering. You've got Larry Adams at LA Audio. There's about a dozen shops in the area, a couple big uh, metric shops. So if you're coming down for this is Barry's first motorcycle, if you can imagine that. He's had it since he was a kid, and he's rebuilding the motor on it. Anybody that keeps their first motorcycle and, and spends a lifetime in the industry is uh, a really rare human being. Most people somehow let it go. 
but he's hung on to this thing and it looks like it's in mint shape uh, and the motor will be better than new when it's done the name of the rally is thunder beach rally and when is when is thunder beach co coming this year oh you're gonna have to ask him when's thunder beach uh, larry just showed up what's happening larry how's it going larry's right across the street la audio take take a look at his uh, website facebook page um directly across the street from Acura engineering he is current world champ in the uh motorcycle stereo um event <laughs> any what he walked over here that's how close we are La larry what was the championship i saw it in the newspaper that, that you won i won the eight speaker class bagger beats in the world finals in louisville kentucky and then i hold the uh northeastern title for iaska for sound quality so, and you're building uh, your bike to defend your title or, or win another one in, during bike week, right? Isn't there a big, big event going uh, on? There's bikes and base in Daytona and Cabbage Patch and a few other little SOS events uh, in Sound Wars. I'm trying to get over there to do that. So you'll be at Cabbage Patch during bike week? I'm going to try to get there if, I, if uh, things permit. I've got three or four big builds in the shop right now, and uh, it's only me. I'm a one-man show. I hear you. So. Bike week's coming up quick. What are we, uh, six weeks out? Six weeks. Yep. Ho hopefully we'll see you there. All right. April 28th through May the 2nd is Thunder Beach at Panama City. That's one of the biggest bike rallies they have down in the uh, uh, Al southern Alabama. So back to the, the, the we kind of deviated a little bit from the uh, knucklehead and battle. Crocker yeah. battle. <laughs> Where do we leave off, Barry? Well, what I was going to do is what I was explaining is uh, when I do this conversion on here, we're going to do airflow test on a knucklehead and then this Crocker at one and three quarter valves and then we're going to do the modifications for our hot rod modifications and we're going to do another airflow test just out of interest i just wanted to make sure that everybody and all it is is just to have some fun with and uh i think that's about it for the for the crocker knucklehead battle for the moment but uh, which motor is going in the, in the 34 frame there this dual carb knucklehead the xrk i call it so this dual carb knucklehead stay tuned because we'll be back hopefully god willing to see that motor in this bike with that brand new NOS, very hard to come by cherry any front end and some repop re wheels. That ought to be a really slick looking. I have piece. another one of those uh, set of forks also back there, new old stock. It's back against the wall. Was, was that was that supposed to be Gypsy's frame? It oh it is. Oh it is. So you're building this for her? Oh yeah, I get nothing. <laughs> Smart man. <laughs> <laughs> happy wife, happy life. <laughs> Absolutely, good man. So uh, yeah, I can't wait to see that done. And uh, you know, it'd be really cool to do a video of her riding it. That that'd be that'd be really cool. Oh yeah, that would be that would be great. This is one that I'm really interested in. I tell you, Jay, uh, not just Anders of uh, Flathead Power, but Jay's had a really uh, some challenging times with his with his son lately uh, through an accident. So uh, we wish them well. I we love Jay Rogers to death, man. But he puts on a great event. It's so much fun to uh, race with those guys and to be out there with those guys. That's awesome. Can't wait to see this thing done, burning up burning up the track. And it's going to be mo' pretty. You know, it looks pretty, looks pretty good right now, as far as I can tell. Uh, it's uh, a bike, like I said, it's purpose-built. doesn't have to be too, too shined up to, to just, it makes a statement whether it's uh, a polish for a show or not. Joe Smith was just huge to me when I was a kid. I don't remember if you remember the Ravel model, but they had a knucklehead model. Mine's in here somewhere up there. I still have it. But this Joe Smith up here, uh granddaddy joe you know 71 uh u.s nationals but uh i was a fan of his i mean when i was a, when i was a kid and now through y'all gone look at this that's him right there joe, joe smith. smith i mean how badass is that but uh his first bike uh his first drag bike was a knucklehead and it was called eccentric and that's the motor first motorcycle i ever drag bike i ever saw and first knucklehead where I knew the term knucklehead. And that was it for me. That's what created me to get Pearl. And that's why I'm building this knucklehead drag bike. I I'm not gonna set the world on fire, but I'm going to, uh, it's like homage to, to Joe Smith and uh, and the knucklehead, I mean, what's cooler than a knucklehead? That's just awesome. Hey, this is old Glenn Kerr here. He's a Louisiana boy. And uh, look at that double trouble. He fires that up when he goes out to uh, events. He fires that up and does a burnout with it. This is Jay Lawless, my dear friend up in Fairbanks, Alaska. Man, he raced with all the great ones. Riley, I get it. But uh, the guy's coming in to light this up, and this is when we were all little kids. This is like our bunk beds. I mean, we got cowboy sheets and all that. 
right. That's awesome. Now, you need to know the history of the bug bits. And y'all need to sign that. Barry, Barry went to a, a, a summer camp when he was a kid. And when we were up there visiting his dad in Louisiana, they were tearing down the, the, the summer camp. Um, and he was like, oh, my God, I have to go see it because I had oh, I have all these memories. Like, I can't remember last week. And Barry remembers, like, summer camp from when he was seven. Yep. So uh, we go there, and he's like, and he gets out of the truck and he goes into this guy on a bulldozer, and he says, is there stuff that's still in the cabins? And, oh, yeah, well, there's like, oh, we need the we need those bunk beds. These are the bunk beds from his summer camp when he was a kid. He wow. went in there and we disassembled bunk beds and I was like, what are we going to do with bunk beds? Well, this is, I guess, what we're going to do with bunk beds. That's pretty cool. You know, yeah. he, he has his bunk beds from summer camp when he was a kid and he has his first motorcycle still. Uh, so yeah. Here's a guy. Uh, but he, and, and everything else he's ever owned. That's um, awesome. We're not even going to talk about guns. He's got a few of those, huh? Uh, yeah. And what I'll find out, um, he'll say, yeah, okay, I don't buy him guns because I don't know exactly what he wants. And he doesn't buy me jewelry because he doesn't know exactly what I want. So when he wants to buy a gun, he says, oh, honey, look what I bought you. <laughs> so I have more guns than I know of that are in the safe only because he said that he bought them from me. There you go. Yeah. So, but right now you can't even buy, you can't buy ammunition. You can't, I mean, it's like uh, rounds that cost 30 cents a piece are now going for $2.50 a piece. If you can find them. It's right a crazy now, time. Crazy, crazy, crazy. It is. So, uh, I don't know. We're just, as long, if he hoards guns and ammunition, I'm good. But he hoards everything else. But I guess that's what makes it cool. Yeah, so it's why that's how you collected this yeah. massive collection of awesome memorabilia. Yeah, yeah. I told him about your bunk beds. Oh, they're no. very showing. Mm -mm. Elvis Presley and all that kind of craziness. Oh boy. With wheels. This is the uh, your wall of fame here. Yeah, it's just a board that we put up, and we started having them sign it, and then it ended up. I'm looking at all these people that many on here are gone. I'm going, holy cow, this is bad. So now. You know, he, he was just killed. He just killed coming back from Sturgis. Oh, no. Uh, but, yeah, there's a lot of people. Here's Rod Bosch. Here, he was in the first uh, class from uh, uh, from uh, he was MMI. One of, he was one of your class, classmates. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is he still yeah. in the industry? Oh, yeah, we're still very, very close. Hellbent Robbie, he's president of Hellbent out in California. Uh, Rocky's on here. I mean, uh, oh, my God. There's some, here's Charlie. Charlie. Rexel, he's dead now. He got killed. He's the one that we did the movies with, the two movies. Very uh, cool. Yeah. We, in fact, we lost those people this past year. 2020 was not a very good year. Here's uh, Rocky. Here's Rogue. Booze Fighters. Athena. Yeah. Uh, uh, Demo. Man, he's a, he's a super cool guy. Marine. Yeah. Big time Marine. Yeah. Athena. Hippie yep, Brad. Yep. Hippie Brad is a boss, too. Yep. So, uh, Grot from, from up your way. That's Grot. Do you remember that when Harley Davidson sued the guy over the word hog? Do you remember that? I, no, I, I don't recall. That's you. Google it. Okay. Well, it was Grot. And it was a hog farm. Harley Davidson, you ain't using black and white color, uh, uh, black and orange colors, and you can't use the word hog. And he said, well, let's go to court and see. And he won. Good for him. And he and he had a little pig. He rode around with a motorcycle with a little pig on his motorcycle. He that. <laughs> That's and, awesome. Uh, but he's been down here a couple times. Yeah. So I'd be honored to sign it. Where should, where should, where do you, where should I, I put my... To, uh... Everybody gets to do what they want to do. Okay. All right. You want me to hold that while you do it? Yes, please. to put our YouTube channel on there so people know who we are. Absolutely. And date it. Yeah, man. Anything. But we have another one of these boards so when people come in now and, and you know, after a while you look at, at all the uh, all the names you've collected and some of the people, their importance in the motorcycle world, music world, uh, uh, film world. Thank you, brother. So uh, honored thank to you. do that. And so, uh, oh, look at that. Two, 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 two. 
No, I'm taking yeah. one. Well, we'll wait until next year then. <laughs> Gotta come back. Yeah, come back next year. Uh, Ron Al, that good Kirby Apathy. Man, he's fast, he's fast. Fast, fast, fast. Very cool. Here's the Harley Twins. They're, they're doing well in the world of modeling and Thank you. things of that nature. Then, now, would that 34 fit in that 34 frame? Bolt right in it. That's Bolt right in. in. That's exactly what came in it. Oh, look for it, Barry, because there's a guy on uh, Marketplace looking for someone to fix a two-cylinder Harley motor that's in his golf cart. Oh, no shit. <laughs> yeah, he's like, any suggestions, and then I put it on there, but... Uh, I don't know whether he Guys, Barry's got something here that you'll never see ever in, in a million years anywhere else. This is, Barry, tell us what this is. This is uh, uh, a 1905 FN of an FN motorcycle, Fabrique National, free motor, turns over, and uh, it's owned by Kevin Boehner. Boehner, y'all, everything Boehner, y'all know him. Uh, he found it in Mexico City, sitting here. Look how beautiful they are. Uh, Oh, if if I could meet anybody, not the engineers, I would want to meet the pattern makers. Look how beautiful these castings are, and the, and the, how delicate the fins are. I just love it's that a beautiful stuff. piece. We all love that stuff. And then uh, you can see the the rotor turning here in the front, where motor's free. Are you rebuilding this? Uh, no, uh, I, I think Beaner's going to sell it. And another rare piece, the old bull taco fanny back. Very cool. And who don't love a bull taco, huh? Look at this, man, oh man. Guys, if you want to tune in to Barry's YouTube channel, check him out at Shop Dope with Barry. That's B-E-R-R-Y. Um, this is a book that he's written, but he's also working on putting his YouTube channel together. So show him some love. Go over there, subscribe, and uh, stay tuned because he's going to be putting out some real primo bikes this year. And I'll uh, tell you, well, thanks to you, we had a ton more subscribers since the last time you were here and uh and ken did some constructive criticism uh on, on my behalf i want things to kind of be perfect and so we had hours and hours of film done we got to edit but vivian does my editing and she leaves uh every three months she's a uh, right now she's in the covid uh traveling nurse she does covid work so she does the editing so then there's no editing done while she's gone so what I'm going to be doing is picking up my phone, and he's going to show me right after we shut this off. He's going to show me how to go straight from my phone to YouTube. It's going to be in the raw, not me, the camera work. And, uh, and we're going to share a, a few more of these, just these fun things. We've got some military stuff in here, motorcycle stuff. You know what it is? It's gray-haired little boy stuff. And I know you like that stuff, you gray-haired some bitches. <laughs> The, That's the, for rent. The inner child loves it, loves to uh, see this stuff from our never, youth never, in the past. Yeah, never forget the inner child. Amen, brother. Well, stay tuned for more great stuff from Barry and Vivian, a.k.a. Gypsy. Thanks for watching, everybody. One moment. One of my mentors, Walter Jones, W.H. Jones.